Alright guys, so in the last video we discussed Lomo photography as well as what features kind of made up that distinct look in a Lomo photograph. In this tutorial we're actually going to get to the good stuff and teach you guys how to create the effect in Photoshop. So let's get started. I'm here on my desktop and I have the downloaded working file right here on my desktop and if you guys need a working file then you guys can download it from this article. If you have one that you want to do on your own, then cool, load it up. Now you're going to get the best effect if you're actually using a raw photo. And the reason for this is basically because we need to make some tweaks to the actual exposure setting uh, before we take it into Photoshop. Because we're going to be amplifying highlights and shadows, we need to make sure that the image isn't completely properly exposed when we take it into Photoshop. If it's already got a lot of highlights and stuff in it, then uh, it's probably going to be too much, too strong of an effect. So what I'm going to do with this image is now I have it in Camera Raw, is just lower the exposure a little bit on it. Um, I'm going to kind of tweak the black so I don't have, because we're going to end up crushing our blacks anyway. So I'm going to kind of lower the black so I can see some uh, blacks in that grill right here. And then uh, I'm going to increase my overall contrast just to kind of deepen the, the colors of the image and the overall contrast. And then increase the clarity and some vibrance to kind of just make the image pop just a little more. I'm also going to warm up my temperature so that their skin tones warm up just a little bit more. Just to kind of exaggerate it a tiny bit. That's actually fine right there, I think. And we're good. I'm going to click open the image. Okay, so we're loaded up. I'm going to first jump my background to a new layer by hitting Control J. Uh, just because I never like to work on an original layer just in case I need to go back to the previous step or whatever. That's kind of a workflow thing for me. You don't technically need to, but I would recommend it. And what we're going to start off with first is our vignette. And if you remember before, um, the vignette does not need to be a perfect vignette. We're going to roughly draw it in and just kind of make a, a rough vignette around it. So I'm not going to use the Photoshop vignetting tool because it's going to be too uniform. So we're going to go over here to the left side. I'm going to select my lasso tool and just make a, a vignetting selection. I'm going to draw just roughly around the image, kind of where I want the vignette to show up. Again, it's just a loose, semicircular shape. All right, now because I don't want this vignette to have this strong edge right here around our selection, I need to feather our selection. And to do that, I'm going to go to the uh, Select menu, click Modify, and then hit Feather, or you can use Shift F6 as the hotkey. And we're going to put in the maximum amount here, which is 250 pixels, so I'm going to leave that. If you don't have 250 pixels, type it in, hit OK, and this is going to feather that selection so that basically from the edges it starts from most dark and goes lighter as it goes in, rather than just being this strong edge where it's dark and then light. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to invert my selection because right now we're actually sele selecting the center of the image. I want to select the border. So to invert my selection, I'm going to hit sh Control, Shift, and then I. And you should see the selection will invert, you'll notice, because the, the outside edge is now selected as well. All right, now to create our vignette, we need to create a levels adjustment layer. And to do that, I'm going to go to my adjustment layers and add levels. And this is going to create an, a levels adjustment layer with my selection loaded as a mask right here. And you can see that just wrapped to the right. So basically from the edge is going to be white, it's going to show our adjustments the most. And then going inside where it fades to black, it's not going to show these level adjustments. So what we're going to do to create our vignette is pull up our shadows. And we're going to pull it up pretty heavily. So I'm going to keep dragging it up, and I think it's good at about, well, let's even go higher. Yeah, I like that. Maybe about 125, and then I'm going to adjust my midtones a little bit just to kind of fade off the effect a tiny bit. And those are good. So if you want to copy in those settings, you can otherwise adjust it to kind of your own preference. All right, so now we've got a really nice vignetting effect where it's just deepening the colors along the edges. Uh, it looks really nice. I'm going to add another layer adjustment. This time we're going to add curves. And this time I want to create that kind of blown look in my highlights and clip shadows. So what I'm going to do on my curves is I'm going to pull my shadows up, or pull my highlights up, sorry, on this side. And we're going to create kind of like this little S curve. And I'm going to pull my midtones down a bit. And then I'm going to deepen my shadows by dropping it down. So we're, we're creating kind of like this little, uh, a little S. And again, this is going to kind of vary on your own preferences. I think this looks good about here. I might try pulling my highlights up just a little bit more to get a little stronger of an effect. And I like that. Okay, so now we've kind of created that blown highlights and clip shadow look. Now we need to add cross-processing. So let's add another curves layer. And the reason why I'm adding another curves layer rather than doing it all in this curves layer, we could actually include it all. I want to add another curves layer because I want to be able to control that adjustment individually. So I'm going to go down here to Layer Adjustments, add another Curves layer. 
This time, rather than adjusting in the RGB channel, we're going to adjust in each individual channel. So, like that vignetting, or I'm sorry, like the cross processing tutorial that went over before, we're going to do the same thing by basically adjusting our reds up in the highlights, down in the shadows, go to greens, adjust the greens up in the highlights, down in the shadows. And again, you guys can play around with what effect you guys like. If you guys want more greens in your highlights, just keep pulling it up a little bit more. I'm going to go my blues, and I'm going to drop blues in the, hi in the highlights, and I'm going to increase it in the shadows. All right. Now I've got kind of this nice cross-process look to it. So now what I want to do is tweak the overall strength and colors of the effect and then amplify the remaining colors. And I think the easiest way to do this, we're going to merge our layers now just to keep it simple. So I'm going to shift and click on background to select all my layers, right click, and then hit merge layers. All right, now we've combined everything into a single layer. I'm going to create a gradient map of this remaining layer. So I'm going to go down to my layer adjustments and create gradient map. Now, what I want this to be is a black to white gradient map. So if you, if you don't see something that's black and white up here, click right here on the gradient map. And then you're going to click right here for black to white. And then you're going to hit OK. And this actually creates a cool effect in its own. So we can actually save this out as a different image right now, and it looks pretty dope. But what we're going to do now is adjust the opacity of this down. And what I'm trying to do, basically, is kind of mute some of the colors. And then we're going to amplify the remaining colors with a saturation layer. I think that's good right there. What I'm going to do is actually I want to kind of mute a little bit of the uh, the blues. And then what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to paint in on this gradient map because I want to hide the, uh, I want to basically amplify the skin tones, which means I want to reveal the layer below. So I'm going to select my paintbrush tool right here. I'm going to make sure I've selected black. I'm going to make sure my opacity and my fill is at 100%, both of them and then I'm just going to paint over their skin so that I can kind of amplify their their colors over their skin. Alright, and this little orange thing over here, kind of the greens in there is cool too. I just don't want to amplify any more blue because it already has a lot of blue in this scene. Great. Now what I'm going to do is add another saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on my adjustment layers, add saturation, on the saturation layer, I'm just going to boost the saturation. What it's going to do is it's going to really make those oranges and stuff pop in the skin. And if you have more skin tones, um, it's going to do even more. But I don't have that much skin tone. This shot is mo mostly blue. So I'm going to just adjust this down a little bit so we have a nice orange. All right, and I think that's pretty good right there. OK, so once again, let's merge our layers one more time by clicking, uh, holding down Shift and clicking on the background layer. Right click, Merge. So now we've combined all those adjustments in a single layer again. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to jump this layer now to a new copy. And what we need to do now is basically create that, that f uh, blurriness. So what I first want to do is jump this to a new layer by hitting Control-J. And we're going to blur our edges by hitting Filter. And then I'm going to apply a lens blur to this. OK, now we have our lens blur adjustment dialog up. I'm going to adjust my radius to a number that I like. It can be fairly high. It's fine. Um, I think 44 is fine. You can kind of play with the settings here. It really doesn't matter. We just want it to be pretty strong and pretty blurry. And then I'm going to hit OK. And depending on the speed of your computer, this could take you know a few moments to, to finish rendering this. OK, now we have that top layer is really blurry. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a mask. And we're going to, by clicking right here, so we're going to add this mask. We're going to select our paintbrush tool again by hitting B or selecting it right here from the menu. Make sure, again, black is selected. This time, I'm going to reduce the opacity and the flow to 50% each. And what we're going to do is, oh, and I want to also increase the size of my brush. Uh, you can usually hit bracket right to do that. Right now, it's acting weird on me, so I'm just going to adjust it from this little brush menu right here. I'm going to adjust it to a pretty large size. Actually, I'm going to go the biggest size possible, 2,500 pixels. And click out of it. And what we're going to do is just start painting in where we want to reveal the sharpness layer below. So I'm going to paint. And I'm just going to click a few times. Because our we have this on a, a lower opacity, I have to click a few times to get it to be, uh, to get it to fully reveal that sharpness layer below. And again, I want it to kind of fade and, and get blurry around the edges. So if you look at our mask right here, you see that in the center it's it's very black. We're, we're uh, showing that sharp layer underneath. Towards the edges it starts to get really blurry, which is nice. I like that effect. I'm going to actually make the edges a little bit more blurry just by kind of clicking on... I'm going to switch my colors to white by hitting X. 
And I'm just going to kind of paint around the edges to kind of increase that blur a little more. And I like that. There's not really any right or wrong way to this. I think that looks cool, so I'm going to keep going. Now I want to sharpen that underlying layer because I want it to be, you know, that, that sweet spot in the center to be really sharp. So I'm going to select my background layer, which was my sharpness layer. I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharpen Mask, and I'm going to really strengthen it. So I'm just going to I'm going to actually click right here so I can see the little sharp area that I want to be sharp. And I'm going to kind of amplify it quite a bit. I think that's cool right there. You know, 97% and about 5. It's going to really vary on what image you're using and upon your preferences. So that's kind of where I like it. And this is looking really good so far. There is one last thing that we need to do, which is to add our film grain. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to merge our layers just to keep our layer palette simple. And now I'm going to go down and add a new layer by clicking this new layer icon. I'm going to select my a, a color of gray and this mid-tone gray uh, at 102 across the RGB is, is pretty good for this. Um, it'll kind of change the effect slightly depending on what uh, exact gray you're using but that kind of medium gray is pretty good. I'm going to select the paint bucket tool or hit G to do that and then I'm going to paint gray over this entire layer. And this is going to be our noise layer. So if you want, you can actually rename this to noise layer. I don't typically do a lot of renaming in my layers, so I know it's kind of a bad habit of mine. So now I'm going to go into my filter menu. I'm going to hit noise. I want to hit add noise. And now we're going to adjust our noise here to get kind of a good amount of grain, but not too much. That's definitely too much if I go too high. So I'm going to adjust it down. Uh, this is, again, a matter of preference. I'm going to leave it as uniform Gaussian. I want it to be monochromatic. If this isn't selected, it's going to make multicolored grain, which is going to kind of look weird in your shadows. So I want this to be kind of just monochromatic film grain. I'm going to hit OK at 18.92%. All right, and now we're going to shift the blend mode of this bl uh, noise layer to overlay. All right, and now this is a little bit stronger in effect, so what I'm going to do is just adjust my opacity down until I kind of have the right amount of noise. All right, this looks great. I think we're done. We've gone from taking our hi-fi digital image and turning it into a Lomo style photograph. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I would recommend you guys kind of play with everything, tweak it to your liking. And uh, once you do, I would go through everything, actually create an action to make this entire process much, much simpler next time you want to run it. Have fun, guys.